this video. That looks glorious. I'm gonna be eating as much Hmong food as I can here in Hmong Town Marketplace in Minneapolis, Minnesota. This is like a chicken grub. This is, sorry, I'm laughing at my own joke. If this place seems familiar to you, it's because we came here about a year and a half ago when we did a spotlight on the Hmong population here in Minneapolis. Hmong folks are a people without a nation, with tribes spread out between Laos and Thailand. After the Vietnam War, a huge population of Hmong folks moved to Minnesota. And actually, you'll find the most Hmong folks here in Minnesota more than you'll find anywhere in the USA. This marketplace is where you're going to... It's like my face can't move because I'm so cold. Hi, how you doing? Good. This marketplace is where you're gonna find all things Hmong, especially the food. Last time I was here, it was in summer. So they had the outdoor markets, they had vegetables, they had chili peppers. Now they don't really have the vegetables outside, but they do have one thing. Let's take a look. If there's something I know about folks from Asia in general, it is that they like food fresh. And that's what they have over here. I know because I heard a bunch of chickens clacking in the background. As soon as I pulled up, boom, chickens alive. Are people taking these away as pets? I kind of doubt it. Some people take them home just for the eggs. Oh, really? Yeah, and they bring them back. Why would they bring them back? Because they down with them. Because it's not, they, the chicken's not laying a lot of eggs. Oh, and then do they get eaten after that? No, they just bring them back. Well, what do you do with a, a chicken that doesn't lay eggs? Um, whatever you want. Oh, okay. Well, that's good info. From here, we're going to head inside, where the animals are a lot more, um, dead. and delicious. Hmong Town Marketplace is probably one of the best kept secrets here in Minneapolis because they have amazing and delicious food. Food that you wouldn't ordinarily see in restaurants and diners around Minneapolis. This is a huge food court they have here with about maybe 15 different vendors. They all have their own specialties, their own menus that you can order from. This one right here is one of my favorites. We're gonna start here for sure. Sorry, you can keep, do, do your thing. We'll start here in a moment <laughs> after I stop making the patrons feel uncomfortable. Boom, and we're back. How do you say the name of your kitchen? Hmong Kitchen. Okay, so it looks like hamu, but it's not that at all. The menu, it looks glorious, but here you can see the meat for itself. Here we have beef ribs, we have chicken, we have pork ribs, big slices of pork belly, and then this is one of my favorites, stuffed chicken wings. And then each wing is $4, but these wings are massive. This is like human chicken grub. This is, sorry, I'm laughing at my own joke. This is like if the liver king was a chicken and he was taking chicken growth hormone. It's that big. All right, let's order up. Well, hello, ma'am. Hello. Could I please have beef ribs and pork belly and four stuffed wings? Is that enough for one person? Oh, it's way too much. That looks glorious. Oh my God. Wow, those wings are giant. And so what's the total? 43. Sounds worth it to me, thank you. Boom, let's take a look at what we have here, starting with the beef ribs. This is 16 bucks. This looks like juicy and fatty. Certainly it's gonna be different from a Texas smoked beef rib, but different how? I'm not sure, I'm about to find out. Let's try it out. Delicious. It's soft, but it's not super soft. It has a little bit of firmness to it, which I don't mind because there's still so much flavor. There's still so much fat in there too. It's glistening with fat. I feel like Mark Weens has to copyright the word glistening. Every time I say glistening, I owe him five cents. Glistening. Beyond that, she gave me some of her sauce. You might think, oh, that looks like what? Maybe it's mild, medium. No, this is going to be fiery, hot, and unforgiving. So I'm going to take this, really sop up some of those seeds. Pleasure and pain, it's hot, it's citrusy. That is some serious punch. Right here, pork belly. Sure, here in the USA we have bacon, but pork belly, it hits differently. The fact that you can see the layers, the striations, the fat, sometimes skin, protein. It's thick, it's juicy. Take a look at this thing. Huh? Instant winner. It's crunchy on the outside. There's an explosion of fatty flavor. You can't get this experience at Perkins. You can't get this experience at IHOP. You have to come here. Beyond that, if this is getting too rich, you dig down into this. This is purple sticky rice. It has a wonderful chewy texture and it pairs perfectly with meat like this. Here we go. Oh, mm -hmm. A little bit more meat. A little bit of salsa. Whoa. It's like I've died and gone to Hmong heaven. It's so delicious. I know Coca-Cola is destroying the world by making everybody fat, but man, I love Coke Zero. This is no ordinary chicken wing. Take a look. Now, this has actually been deboned. There's a level of artistry here few could understand. The bone is taken out and the skin is stretched to its absolute limit. So when you take a bite, what do you have inside? Let's find out. Look at that. 
glass noodles. The skin is thick and crunchy and fatty, and then inside you have this glass noodle mixture. There's some greens, there's seasoning. Look at that, just a big ball of flavor. Mm. It's the best surprise inside of a chicken wing. I mean, you could use this as a punching bag. It's not gonna break open. So that is round one. We've had three different meat dishes, but there is so much more to see. Let's keep moving. We've come to our second location here at Annie's Restaurant. Here they have a combination of items available on the menu. They have some of the traditional and then some very innovative foods I've not seen before. First, with the more traditional, we've got a fried banana, a recipe as old as time. So the bananas are four for three dollars. Here we have six, so what would that be? Five dollars. Boom, banana. I love how much crispified these little ends have become. I'm gonna break it in half first. Oh yeah, it's soft on the inside. Let's try it out. It's crunchy, it's sweet, it tastes of bananas. A lot of places in Southeast Asia, means you're gonna find people frying bananas because it's delicious. Here, we have something not so traditional. Corn dogs, these are actually more like Korean corn dogs. Right here, we saw something like this recently in New York City. That is a French fry covered corn dog. Here, I think this is a cheese dog. I'm guessing because of uh, the little explosion here. What's on the outside of this? It looks like shake and bake. I'm not entirely sure. Oh my lord. <laughs> Take a look in that cheese hole. It is super ultra crispy on the outside with all these little flaky bits. I gotta ask what's on here. My man, can I please ask you, what is this crispy part? We're doing an interview in the back here. Sir, put your mouth on the microphone. Oh, is this crust? Oh, okay, like panko crusting. Ah, oh, right, I feel ashamed. As a fake online chef, I should have known that. Take a look again, now with new eyes. This is a panko crusted corn dog, very fancy. When you squeeze it, let's see if it can belch out some cheese. Yeah, that's what we want right there. And what's amazing is I think this is a high bred dog because look down here, the wiener hidden underneath. You thought you were safe, but no, the wiener was there all along. Oh yeah, I can hear myself gaining weight. It's lovely. This right here, the flaming Hot Cheeto dog. What I love is the very natural color. Just kidding, you don't see this color anywhere in nature. This is a combination of incredible chemical engineering. It's Cheetos that have been crushed down and repurposed. Let's go for it. Oh yeah, it is full of cheese, similar to our Penko dog. But here, the outside, it is like thick with Cheeto dust. Look at this. It's savory, super salty. It is an excellent pairing to this cheese. This is a glorious creation. Food innovation at its highest heights. This guy has cracked the code, love it. We have come to our next destination. Right here, they're making papaya salad. You can't just toss a papaya salad, you have to crush it. And so right here, they have a big kind of mortar and pestle with a wooden bowl. All the ingredients get added in and then they crush it away. This is something that you won't really find anywhere else in Minnesota, except for maybe your Hmong friend's house. Even then, probably not. They have six different items to choose from. I'm gonna go with the Tum Lao style with shrimp and meatballs. I'm gonna ask very kindly the lady who is mixing up the salad if I can go behind the counter and actually see how it's made. Let's go. Okay, I'm breaking and entering, I'm going behind the Counter. Ooh, look at all that, that's shiny. All right, right back here is where the papaya magic happens. Hi, it's me. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Uh, you're Chang. It's nice to meet you. You are the papaya master, correct? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. I'm gonna get a number two, okay. and it's gonna be made right here. Yeah. Let's do it. How spicy? Oh, yeah, spice it up. Oh my God, that's a lot. So she's starting with the peppers inside, then some garlic, sugar, MSG, yes, peanuts, and then all that is gonna get mashed up together. Oh, beautiful. Fish sauce going in next. Is that tamarind paste? Yeah. Fish sauce and shrimp paste. Now the tomato, and all this is still just to flavor the food. Okay. Squeeze of lime, mix. Ooh. All right, shrimp going in next, plus some beef meatballs going in. Now it's time to load up on the papaya. Oh yes. Mix, beat, repeat. I like that it's January and you're wearing sandals. Yeah. <laughs> you are a true Minnesotan. Yes, I am. <laughs> and that's it? That's it. Oh yeah, that's all the best stuff on the bottom right there. All the nuts, all the meat, beautiful. This looks incredible. I cannot wait to try it out. Thank you so much. Right here we have round three, the papaya salad. Come take a look. I wanna scoop up just some of that papaya. There's so many chili seeds inside. I'm getting lost between what is a crushed peanut and what is a chili seed. That is a wonderful bite. With all the protein we've been eating today, it's gonna help balance my stomach out a little bit. Mm-hmm. It certainly has a fishiness to it. I find that enjoyable. Let's take a look at some of this protein. Here we have some beef balls that have been quartered. 
Mmm, very dense balls. I wish my balls were this dense. Here, a shrimp. Papaya salad is not just about the flavor, it's also about the texture. This papaya, it's super crunchy. Then you got the beans, the peanuts, also crunchy. Mm -mm -mm. It's every flavor in one. It's got lime for sourness, it's got MSG for savoriness, it's got sugar for sweetness, and it's got chilies for spiciness. It has every base covered. The thing is this, you don't have to put another thing down to enjoy one thing. That being said, American salads are so lame compared to stuff like this. When I lived in Korea, living in Vietnam now, there's so many healthy foods that are abundant with flavor like this, but they achieve that flavor without putting on a gallon of ranch or blue cheese or French or anything like that. This is 11 bucks and that is absolutely worth it. Eat all this, that amount of fiber, oof, you're gonna be feeling good on the toilet, rocking it, and firing. Location four. I'm getting quite full at this point. <laughs> we have about 10 takeout boxes at this point. Here, meat selections you've not seen yet. This is a fried fish, but next to it, look at these beautiful, swirly, twisting beef intestines. Only for $8. Here, more pork belly, stuffed wings, sausage. They've got catfish wrapped up in a leaf, wrapped up in, well, saran wrap. This is a big old chicken leg right here. They even have a whole chicken with its head still on. I believe its head is attached and it's just kind of in a headlock behind its neck. Palm fret. This is a fish. Uh, more chicken. Look down here. <sighs> So many different options. I'm gonna get the beef intestines and then perhaps one thing after that. And then this may have to be my final course for today. This is a lot. Excuse me, ma'am. Could I please get the one beef intestine, please? You want to come up? Yeah, we can cut it. Oh, very nice. Right here, we have an assortment of opals and offcuts. These are foods, some of them I'm pretty sure I'll like, and some of them I'm not that confident about. Let's go down the line right here. Buffalo intestines, a spicy sauce, similar but more soupy. Over here, all the way on this side, this is the pork ear. It looks like it's been braised with some soy sauce. It's looking gooey and wonderful. But then we have this one here in the middle. This is bitter beef tripe and tendon. Now, tripe would be those little pieces of stomach that look kind of furry. And then the tendon, we all know what tendon is. We're gonna get back to this one later, Let's start with the intestines over here. I'm curious what is inside. Part of me wants to get up and go ask, but it's a whole 10 steps that way. So I'm just gonna eat it and find out. Let's go. Chewy, heavy, more bitter than I expected. It tastes like there's ground meat on the inside. Not a ton of flavor. And so I think it's in dire need of this spicy sauce right here. So I'm gonna take a similar looking piece with some of that ground meat inside. Gosh, I hope I'm right about that. Give it a little bit of a dip. Now I'm happy. Although it'll be short-lived and I will soon descend into a deep postprandial depression. But for now, pretty good. Let's move over here to the ears. I love that these have kind of congealed and stuck all into one big chunk, like a piece of canned chicken or something like that. Oh, right there. We got a good bite, some skin, some cartilage. It's gooey, it's brown. Let's try it. Mmm. -hmm. The unique texture because the outside is really gummy, but it's sweet, and it's got almost like a beautiful soy sauce base to it. But inside, the cartilage is really snappy and really crunchy. Oh, look at that big bad boy. Big fat girl. Big fat boy. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this big fat girl. It sounds so mean. <laughs> it's heavy. It's delicious. To me, this is like a great drinking food. Right here, our final course. This is the bitter beef tripe. Now, what do you think is making it bitter? I asked. It turns out bile. Bile is one of my least favorite foods. I'm going to be a man, and I'm going to sip this bile broth. It's not overly bitter, but it is, um, it's pretty bitter. The broth is so thick, it's like a beautiful, greasy collagen. I don't hate it, I just wanna take a sip and then I wanna drink a beer. All right, let's try the tendon. Oh, that's good. You don't have to just raw dog the broth. You can just get the little bits inside. There's some pieces of beef in there too. Of anything I've tried today, this one is the most, I would call like an acquired taste. Let's try some of the stomach. Oh, yeah. A good texture. I love the savoriness. I love the richness. I don't know, that one's pretty good. Every bite's a little bit different. It's like a game of Russian roulette. Overall, bitter, but not insanely bitter. I like it, but I probably wouldn't get it again unless I had a beer in my hands. At this point, I am very, very full and out of money. How much did I spend today? I think nearly $100. Should this be the $100 Mung Food Challenge? Well, if our original title fails, then I'll change it to $100 Mung Food Challenge. I guess we'll see, we, we don't know. We gotta market the video somehow. Oh, guys, it's freezing out. It's Minnesota and it's almost dark. That was a fun food video here at Monktown Marketplace. Today I spent this much money. It's not really a, a is it a, wait, hold on. Monktown Marketplace is one of my favorite places to eat in Minneapolis. I have a lot of takeout because I could not eat all that food. My favorite thing of the day had to be simple, but straightforward pork belly and sticky rice. It just doesn't get any better than good old steamy, chewy, sticky rice and some rich, oily, crunchy pork belly. I freaking loved it. Guys, next time you're in Minneapolis, stop by because why not? Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. Oh.
I was choked on air for a second there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my, I would have had to find a lung doctor. Uh. Welcome to the Best Ever Merch Store, where you can check out our brand new designs. Best Ever Bandanas in black, white, and red. The Please Send Nudes Hoodie. Pillow Soft Fabric with a quality custom graphic inlay. And our Street Food Around the World Graphic Tee. We're now shipping everywhere around the world. Just visit shopbesteverfood.com or click the link in the description below to get your new merch today. A peace.